Hi, I'm Eric and welcome back to Not An Audio Review Channel where I don't review audio gear. This video was inspired by a video by the great Thomas in Stereo, where at the end he announced he's making his first amplifier with a headphone output, an EL84 tube amp with speaker posts that can do 4 watts of output. Now, I was looking forward to Thomas finally having a headphone amp in his lineup, but the announcement that it had low power speaker outputs just made it disappointing. And it made me think of all the headphone amps with low power speaker outputs out there. Typically this is the realm of tube amps, like all the amps and sound headphone amps, the Woe Audio WA5, the Bottlehead Mainline, the Deckware Zen Trio, the Line Magnetic LM Mini 84IA, the KN Soul 170HA, the Elikit TU8150, and others but also solid state amps like the Enlium Amp 23R and the Orchard Audio Valencia. And I want to explain why I think this type of amplifier makes no sense and should not exist. But before I explain why, don't forget to like and subscribe because you know you want to, or you don't, I don't actually know you. Now, one of the perverse facts about speakers is that smaller speakers tend to need more power than bigger ones. There's exceptions, but generally, this is why bookshelf speakers tend to need more power than floor standing speakers particularly floor standing speakers with very large drivers. The reason for this is pretty simple to understand. A speaker driver vibrates to push air to make sound waves. Low notes require bigger sound waves than high notes, and so a physically big driver can make those big sound waves more easily than small drivers, which need to pull back and push forward a lot more to make the same size sound wave as a big driver can make with a lot less motion. Floor standards can also have bigger voice coils and bigger cabinets for more resonance, which can help with making those big low notes. This is also why tweeters, which make the high notes, can be much smaller than woofers or subwoofers. And it's also why stuff like enormous open baffle speakers can run off like three watts or something. It just takes more power to make a small speaker make low notes. Now, if you're listening near field and you have speakers, they're probably bookshelves. You can see at my desk, I have pretty big bookshelves for a desk, but I couldn't fit floor standards here. A lot of people save space at desks also by having powered or active speakers like the iLoud micros I used to use or Vanatu Zeros or Gentle X or whatever. And where are you listening to headphones on a non-portable headphone amplifier? You're probably listening to them in a near field environment. This is why most non-portable headphone amplifiers are called desktop headphone amplifiers because you put them on your desk. And this is actually why there's been so much growth in headphones and headphone amps over the last however many years, especially since COVID, because people realized they were sitting or gaming at their desks or whatever, so why shouldn't they have really nice headphones and the gear to run them? So why would you ever want a headphone amplifier with low power speaker posts that can't run the kind of speakers you have in a near field setting? It just doesn't have a use case. Now wait, I hear you writing angrily in the comments, you have a midfield or far field setup and you listen to headphones there, you do it all the time. What's wrong with this whiny, not a review man? But what did you have to do to do that? You probably had to buy a new extra long headphone cable because the ones that came with your headphones probably didn't reach all the way to where your gear is. Standard replacement cables aren't that long either, are they? You need special cables. And do you know why? Because that's not the normal use case for headphones. You're an edge case. And not only that, the kind of flea watt speaker outputs in most of these kinds of amplifiers don't even have enough power to run the most common floor standing speakers, only really easy to drive ones with big ass drivers or single driver full range things. So now you're a person who uses a headphone with an extra long cable and who has a really sensitive speaker. You're an edge case inside an edge case, which is the same argument I'll use about people who tell me that they're at their desktop using a little speaker with a single full range driver. You're an outlier and also you have no bass and cone breakup and what are you even doing, but that's a rant for another time. It's not that I think low power speaker amps shouldn't exist. You have your open baffles or big full rangers, you should be able to get your special amp for them if you want. But why make them headphone amplifiers as well? Okay, now I see you in the comments. If you have very sensitive speakers, why should you have to buy a separate speaker amp and headphone amp if you want to do both things? Why not have both in one? Okay, fine. But at the very least, your headphone amp slash speaker amp should have one other thing, and that's a preamp output. Which brings me to the second part of this rant, which is that all headphone amplifiers should have preamp outputs. Look, here's the schematic for the amp camp preamp plus headphone amp that I built. You see how right before the headphone output, there's a switch that just switches the output to the RCA jacks? 
That's it. That's all you need. In fact, you don't even need the switch, which on the ACP Plus uses a particular jack that automatically switches when you insert your headphones. But you can just at minimum split off the output so both the headphone and the preamp outputs are on all the time, like my Aune S17 Pro or the Ferrum Aura does. I'd rather have a way to switch between them, but it's not absolutely necessary. And preamp outputs let you use the headphone amp as a preamp for any speaker amp you want, for those active or powered speakers, whatever. And so, if it's so simple and useful, why are there all these headphone amplifiers without preamp outputs? Now you might be saying, not everyone who needs a headphone amp is going to run speakers. And that's true. But why wouldn't you give them the option when it's such a common use case? At my desk, I switch between headphones and speakers all the time because sometimes I have family in the next room and I don't want to bother them. And sometimes I just want to listen to my headphones because they sound great. And other times I can let loose with the speakers. And if you're a manufacturer, you might be saying, well, those extra wires and RCA jacks or whatever add material and labor costs. That'll increase the price. Look, look, this is my shit Magni Plus. The new version of this costs $120 and is made in the USA. And what's this you see on the back? Yeah, those are preamp outputs. So shit can afford to do this on $120 made in the USA amp and you can't? Come on. Or maybe you're saying, I don't want to compromise the purity of my signal path or something. Listen, listen, man. If it's good enough for Nelson Pass, it's good enough for you. Look, here's his $4,000 HP A1C. You see what it has on the back? Yeah, those are preamp outputs. What, are you better than Papa Nelson Pass, hollowed be his name? Maybe you are, I don't know. But put some dang preamp outputs on your headphone amp anyway. Now I want to be clear. I'm not talking about higher power speaker amps with headphone outputs. If your amp can do 50 watts or even 30 watts into 8 ohms, you can still run a lot of bookshelves with that. Those are fine. Though, even though a lot of those have preamp outputs too, just in case you want to add more power. Of course, the biggest problem with your common integrated amps and with headphone jacks is that the manufacturers will often spend a lot of time making some artisanal discrete speaker amp circuit. Then when it comes time to adding the headphone output, they'll just throw some cheap op amp on it. Just gimp their headphone output completely. And like, come on, have some pride. But there are speaker amps with really good headphone outputs out there. Stuff like the shit Ragnarok or the LSA VT70 that I had and talked about in my first video. And while those are often a bit big for a desk, you can do it if you're creative. People get racks next to their desk or I have this L-shaped desk so I can stick gear down there. But if you really, really want to put low power speaker posts in your headphone amp, just Please also put preamp output so there's some flexibility for people who might be interested in your amp for headphones, but also have bookshelf speakers. But really, for most people looking for a headphone amp, speaker posts are unnecessary. Preamp outputs are the thing you want to have, that you should always have, and then you can put whatever speaker amp you want after it to run whatever particular speakers you may have, and still have your nice headphone amp. All right, feel free to tell me how wrong I am in the comments or how much you agree with me. I always like that. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Next time, I think I'm going to talk about streamers and why a cheap streamer is still better than an expensive DDC on your computer. Subscribe to get that episode. Bye now.